Well, there we are. That music means indeed it is the Sunday Sermon moment. And this week, I thought I'd focus, probably no surprise, on the migration madness. Because we had a situation where some of the asylum seekers, illegal migrants, decided to go on strike. I mean, they've taken some tips and some hints from the trade unions. Yes, indeed, from the rail unions and other unions. So they decided that uh, they'd go on strike outside their central London hotel. They weren't happy with their conditions in that hotel, in prime London real estate, at our expense. So they moved out and were sleeping on the street with their sleeping bags and all their cases. And I thought I'd go and establish the facts for myself on Friday morning. Bright and early, it was about 7.45, it was fairly chilly. And you may have seen the video if you on social media, but you may not. So what we've done is I've just sort of pieced together uh, a few elements from the video of my chat with one of the migrants who, uh, called Dia, who spoke good English. And just take a watch or a listen to this. Hello, the hotel. And this hotel is not good, actually. So they've come from a hotel in, yeah, yeah. in, uh, in es Ilford, Essex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I see. And so, but they don't like this hotel. Yeah, yeah. And why do they not yeah. like this hotel? This hotel is not good, really. You have a, too much smell and... Too much room, smell? Yeah, and room is very small. They want to... The rooms put, are too small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is very bad. Here is very bad, in the centre of London. Small, room's very small. Bathroom too small? Yeah, too much. I'm so sorry about that. That's really really shocking that the bathroom is too small. But do you get nice food here? Yeah, nice. food is bad. Food yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're happy with the food? That's nice. No, no phone. No. But you have Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah. You have Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi, but... Wi-Fi, is it we, good or, or we, too... Bad Wi-Fi? Yeah, Shocking, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. You have bad Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah. That's not good, is it? If you've got bad Wi-Fi. So wh where was home for you? Where have you come from? Um, come from, yeah. You come from Iraq? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've been here how many years? Two years. You've been here two years, living in uh, Ilford in Essex? Yeah. Okay. And who's been paying for you? You get, you get a weekly um, allowance? They, they, the, the government give you a little bit of weekly money, is that right? Give eight pounds for one week. And in here, this area, everything is expensive. Everything's expensive, yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. It's central London. It's, it's an expensive city. And uh, you've been here two years. And who's been paying for this? Government. Government. And who pays the government? It's the British taxpayer. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's all of us. Yeah, so we're all paying. And clearly we need this sorted out. Well, there we are. We do need this sorted out. That is for sure. And that video has now been viewed well over two million times uh, on the various social media platforms. And, of course, we live in a democracy, so uh, some have congratulated me and applauded that uh, that interview uh, but also uh, many have gone absolutely tonto on the left so while some are congratulating me saying the cheek of it complaining at, uh, uh, at their conditions many people in the UK would love to live in central London uh, for nothing for free uh, and indeed live in a lot worse conditions but apparently those on the left who went nuts at that uh, that interview they said that I've exploited the gentleman and manipulated him. And what I say to that is utter nonsense. What I've done is highlighted the truth of what they were complaining about and the utter irony of this situation. There we are, centre of London, centre of Pimlico, about a m half a mile from Westminster. Now, coincidentally, a couple of my friends in the last couple of years have actually stayed in the very same hotel in recent years. And Yes, it's a value for money, uh, cheerful hotel, but they said it was perfectly acceptable. And you're not going to get a huge suite of bathrooms in the centre of London. It's a pretty basic fact. So we've exposed everything there in that interview for all to see. What we probably could all agree on, whichever side of this debate you're on, is when, when the gentleman said that he'd been here for two years living in a hotel and he hasn't been processed his case hasn't been dealt with and yet we've got Rishi Sunak promising to get on top of the battle how incompetent and utterly useless do you have to be 
not to be able to deal with someone in two years, for heaven's sake. You couldn't make it up. You simply couldn't make it up. And there we are, Rishi Sunak, back in December. He promised that by the end of 2023, they would have cleared the backlog, which, when he said that, was about 140, 150,000. The backlog, instead of reducing six months later, has now grown by another 30,000 or so. It's about 172,000. So there's that gentleman. He's been here two years. He's still waiting. And I give credit to him. He's learnt some decent English. But there's a couple of words that he hadn't quite worked out. Probably would be, I think, helpful to us British taxpayers that are paying the bills. Maybe, maybe he should say, and maybe we'd like to hear those, those simple words, thank you. Thank you for giving me a roof over my head. Thank you for feeding me. Thank you for listening to my case. Yes, you can highlight that it's been a long time waiting for it to be processed. But I think those of us paying the bill, we quite often like, it's like when you go to, if you go out for a meal with someone and you pay the bill, you hope that the other people, they'd say thank you very much. And that's all I think we want. Otherwise, you know, people are gonna say, well, it's a bit of a cheek, isn't it? Now talking of a cheek, I went there later in the day to do a media interview to camera and there was a bunch of uh, do-gooder lefties there. Uh, they were, uh, there were a couple of ladies. There was also a creature, frankly, whose gender I could not identify. It was such an extraordinary sight. But there we are. Uh, and they wouldn't allow me to carry out the media interview, no. They stood in my space abusing me, calling me all sorts of things. And yet when I asked them a simple question like, what was their name? I gave them my name. I told them what I did. They wouldn't even answer their name. They wouldn't answer whether they had a job. They wouldn't answer where they worked. It was about quarter to four in the afternoon. And uh, they said they were on a lunch break. Hang on, who's on a lunch break at a quarter to four on a Friday afternoon, for heaven's sake? You might have finished work early or you might be in work. So I then asked them if they're on benefits. They wouldn't answer that either. What have you got to hide, lady lefties, who were on Pimlico on Belgrave Road that day? Why are you so scared of admitting even your name? I then tried to talk to some of the other asylum seekers, who were very hooded up, wearing masks outside. I think, what are they, what are they hiding? This lack of transparency, this lack of information, and having been there, I can really understand, up and down the country, how intimidating it is. And there were, it was pretty, you know, it really was quite a mess. And there were beer bottles all around. And I'm thinking, this really is a shocking scene. Now, I did go into the hotel to talk to the manager to see if I could go and maybe look at the size of the rooms and the bathrooms that were the issue of concern. But the manager wouldn't let me past the front door and the security, again, all very secretive. And again, I think that just, that worries us. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. What's everybody hiding about this? It's not right. I say, we can all agree. How can it take two years to process that gentleman and many of his friends and colleagues' applications? Two years at our expense for heaven's sake. So the government now is trying to reduce the cost of it, and that's why this process is happening. They're putting more people in a room. The best way, folks, to reduce the cost is to process the applicants quickly, efficiently, simply. Make a decision, and the vast, vast majority that we all know are economic migrants, thank them for their application, but say, no, you don't qualify, and therefore, you must go back. And I think many millions of people up and down this country who are fuming having watched that video at the sort of the, the lack of gratitude, I think are saying, well, to be honest, if you don't want our hospitality, then please accept someone else's hospitality. Perhaps go back to France. It's a nice, safe country that many of us go on holiday on. Or perhaps back to where you came from if you don't like our hospitality. I mean, that's where we're getting to with this. 
it's fair to say that I suspect this sermon has been somewhat different to the sermon from Archbishop Justin Welby. But I suspect that my sermon is much more relevant to millions and millions of people's concerns up and down this country. Because our hospitality is being abused, it's being used to the wrong purposes for a whole variety of reasons, but primarily because of the Home Office's utter incompetence. And yet we learned this week that the civil servants in the Home Office, if the Rwanda scheme gets approved in the Court of Appeal, if they still don't like it, even though it's lawful, legal, then they might go on strike and refuse to carry out the will of the people via the elected representatives who've been appointed ministers. At which point I say, you folks, you're in breach of contract, you're fired, no compensation, you don't pass go, out of a job, go somewhere else. Because the people of this country want this issue sorted, we want to stop the cost, we want to welcome those genuine, genuine claims in an appropriate number, but the rest we've got to stop this nonsense. Completely, utterly absurd. And with that, here endeth my Sunday sermon.